when one of the world's biggest tech companies decides to open source a core database technology, it says a lot about where the industry is heading. Microsoft is contributing DocumentDB to the Linux Foundation, a move that not only expands developer choice, but also shows how far Microsoft has come in its open source journey. Today, I'm joined by Kirill Gavriluk, Vice President of Cosmos DB at Microsoft, to talk about why this step matters, how it fits into the larger open source ecosystem, and what it means for developers building the next generation of application. Most people may not know this, but I've been covering this space for so long that Microsoft is a very active player in the open source world and in the Linux Foundation ecosystem. Looking at Microsoft's involvement with open source, what is the significance of bringing DocumentDB to the Linux Foundation? Well, DocumentDB is a document database. Document databases are critical for AI apps because the semi-structured data documents are mainstream uh, in, in AI apps. And unfortunately, there is no open source standard for document databases in the industry, unlike what we have in relational databases in Postgres, for example. Everyone loves Postgres. It's open, it's vendor neutral, uh, and everyone uses it. So Microsoft wanted to change that by launching DocumentDB project earlier this year. It's open source, it's developer friendly, it is based on Postgres to take advantage of a modern database engine, and it leverages the Postgres ecosystem, which is probably the best ecosystem in the databases. It is built to be fully compatible with MongoDB drivers because MongoDB is the most popular API uh, for document databases out there. And so we wanted uh, developers to be free to use uh, from our DocumentDB from their existing apps or build new apps with it. Now, it ex DocumentDB extends Postgres with stronger support for JSON, BSON, with document queries. It has MongoDB compatibility. It's, it is easy to deploy anywhere, any cloud, on-premises using Kubernetes operator. It is very friendly for developers, takes less than a minute to get started. It is on GitHub today available. Uh, and it's really, the goal is to uh, make it a standard, to help industry develop it together with uh, everyone in the community to develop it into an open standard for document databases. What does this move say about Microsoft's role in the open source ecosystem today? Well, Microsoft, as you mentioned, is a not new to open source. We are committed to open source. We are one of the top contributors to Linux Foundation. We are the number one cloud provider in terms of number of contributions to Postgres, for example, a little known fact. Uh, and this is uh, with DocumentDB just continues on that commitment to the open source and Linux Foundation and Postgres. Uh, we have a fairly established practice in the company. Developers are encouraged to participate in open source projects. And we don't believe that something like uh, for a document database ecosystem to thrive, we don't believe that there is, can be one vendor controlling the standard database. We believe it needs to be a vendor neutral, open source, permissive license, and everyone contributing just like Postgres exists today. You're talking about developers. What kind of new flexibility or choice does this contribution mean for developers? DocumentDB already attracted uh, quite a bit of interest and support from the industry. Uh, we have about a dozen uh, organizations either contributing or interested or supporting, including Amazon Web Services, Google, Snowflake, Yugabyte, uh, Superbase, CockroachDB, uh, the list is long. And these organizations believe in the need for developer freedom. And so it's a natural step, uh, next step in DocumentDB journey to make it really uh, vendor neutral. And Linux Foundation is best at ensuring that this project is truly vendor neutral, truly open, and encouraging a broader industry participation. I don't think Microsoft can do it alone. And the to that, I would want to add another great news today, which is Amazon Web Services are joining DocumentDB project to contribute and to be a co-maintainer uh, 
to advance this project forward towards becoming an open standard. Beyond Microsoft, who else is participating so far? And how do you see the community grow or form around DocumentDB? So while the project was in under Microsoft organization, right, it's open source, uh, we already had, um, as I mentioned, uh, Yugabytes, uh, a, num- a number of uh, companies, like we had folks taking uh, DocumentDB and running it on Raspberry Pi. Uh, the ecosystem started to form, right? And so we wanted to encourage and enrich this trend and strengthen this trend. Um, Today, uh, we have folks from AWS already started contributing in it. And so now t- today they publicly announced uh, this. Uh, and I see with this move to Linux Foundation, the barrier of entry, uh, because it's a v- vendor neutral environment, uh, more organizations will easily join because you can see that this is a true open, true uh, cloud, uh, vendor neutral project. Uh, and Linux Foundation will help increase this broad collaboration between between different organizations. Why did you choose Linux Foundation as home for this technology? That's a great question. From Microsoft's point of view, uh, we already uh, invested in several projects under Linux Foundation, right? We are, we are in the CNCF, and we uh, we are kind of one of the top contributors there. And uh, we like it. It's a it's a proven organization, and the projects that are under Linux Foundation uh, are similar in nature to DocumentDB. They are focused on developer. It's a familiar brand, familiar environment. <clears throat> we think Linux Foundation will attract more developers, more uh, contributors to the project. Uh, that's really was it. Uh, we wanted a vendor neutral established organization that has good practices that we've known and partner, partnered before. Yeah, Linux Foundation seemed to be a perfect choice. Let's talk about the organizational structure. Will DocumentDB become a top level Linux Foundation project or will it live under one of the existing foundations? Uh, we made it top level project uh, because we believe it's a uh, it's fairly unique. It's the first database project on the Linux Foundation. If you don't count Valky, I mean, it was more of a cache, but and it's uh, just like uh, other open search Valky, other projects of this nature. Uh, it has a unique mission, uh, has unique requirements on the tree, on the on the organization, on the on the operations. Uh, so we th- we thought the top level project is best for this, and uh, it's. So that's that's what we decided. Linux Foundation has a very well-defined structure for these foundations. Can you talk about the organizational structure of DocumentDB Foundation? It is really projects by developers for developers. Uh, we do have a steering committee, and this steering committee uh, has currently uh, Microsoft uh, folks from Microsoft, folks from AWS, folks from Yugabyte, from Rippling, another contributor, uh, AB and Bev uh, uses uh, DocumentDB in- internally, so they're interested in contributing. Uh, this and it will grow, right? And these are true technical people. This is not a marketing body. This is true technical people that will oversee, uh, help oversee the consistency and uh, ensure that roadmap is true to the principles, to the mission of the project, which is open source document database based on Postgres compatible with MongoDB, developer friendly, right? That's, that mission is very, uh, very important to us. Uh, and the principles of how we develop, we're going to develop this uh, project, which is transparency, developer freedom, uh, open source, of course. Uh, so that's what the responsibility of the steering committee uh, and then anyone is welcome to contribute, right? There are no limits. There are no special sign-ups, special membership fee or anything like that. E- everyone is welcome to contribute. And DocumentDB already, even under Microsoft uh, Crown, it already had, I think, uh, somewhere between 60 to 100 contributors. Um, so everyone is welcome, uh, and it's very easy to do so. How does this step tie into Microsoft's broader commitment to open source and to the developer community? And what does it mean for the future of Cosmos DB? An interesting fact is that we use Document DB project internally for one of the flavors of Cosmos DB, which is Cosmos DB vCore. 
This is our document database flavor of Cosmos DB. And we use Document DB for it. And we run mission critical apps on it. It's fairly, it has been uh, on the market for a uh, few years and fairly established. Um, so we believe and will continue to contribute uh, innovations and improvements that from our Cosmos DB v core uh, project into Document DB project. And of course, leverage the Document DB uh, improvements for our services. And this is the practice that Microsoft uses with other open source projects, right? We can we give what we in, innovate to the community and we leverage the community uh, input and feedback. And I think that's the, what's great about this joint database development. Just like we partner with Amazon, with Google, with others on Postgres development, we all contribute and we, Microsoft is one of, uh, has the most contributions out of all public clouds into Postgres. We have com uh, committers and, uh, Postgres committers, their focus is Postgres. They don't do anything for Microsoft proprietary uh, investments. They're just all, uh, they're full-time on uh, working on Postgres. Uh, and we are bringing any innovation we have, we are bringing to Postgres. Very similar approach we're gonna, that we're going to use for DocumentDB. Uh, document, we continue to use it. We continue to contribute. And we encourage others. And we par will partner with Amazon, uh, with Google, if they decide to start contributing, and with Yugabyte, with uh, Rippling, uh, EBM Dev, other contributor, existing contributors, and future uh, that are joining. The beauty of open source is that when you create a project, Linux is a good example. You know, you create it to solve a specific problem, but when you move it to an open source foundation, like Linux Foundation, the the kind of users and use case and workloads emerge. They even surprise you because you did not envision them. Hey, people will be using it in that capacity. What kind of exciting use cases you're already seeing of Document DB, and how do you see the project may evolve in future? I mentioned at the beginning that document databases play a special role in AI apps, right? Because AI apps have considerably more semi structured data than the apps uh, of the past. Conversations, messages, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Uh, and so we expect a lot more innovation in the AI space alongside of vector indexes, alongside of the hybrid search, alongside of uh, built-in embedding generation, uh, built-in models. Like we expect to both leverage uh, similar innovations in Postgres ecosystem and contribute back, as well as something specific to document databases uh, coming in. Uh, from the AI needs, from the AI app needs. And we're already seeing this and, uh, and we will contribute our innovations there as well. For, um, for example, this KNN is uh, one of the innovations that Microsoft has, right? And so that's a natural next step is to contribute this KNN and make it, uh, make what we use, um, uh, internally fully open source and put it in the document DB. Uh, there are many other uh, things we're already seeing community does. For example, expanding DocumentDB to work on other form factors. I mentioned Raspberry Pi, uh, embedding devices, some things that maybe Microsoft will not use, but it's great to see because it helps ecosystem. And generally, our goal with DocumentDB is to enrich the ecosystem, enrich the document ecosystem. That's one of the reasons why we added MongoDB compatibility uh, in there so that the ecosystem of document databases only grows and thrives thanks to the open source nature of the project. For those organizations and enterprises that have already invested in document DB, what does this open source move mean in practice? Does it mean more stability, faster innovation, new migration paths? I'm sure everyone will have slightly different angle at it. From Microsoft perspective, this allows us to all contribute and develop this project faster. Uh, and everyone contributes their own expertise. For example, Amazon is known for database expertise. They build wonderful database services on AWS platform. Their contributions to DocumentDB will only strengthen the project. Right? We love partnership with them with Amazon on Postgres. We will we are excited about the upcoming part, uh, the partnership with uh, Amazon on DocumentDB. Um, of course, everyone will also use and leverage DocumentDB in their own services. And it's great because it will only harden and improve the service. And it will bring us towards 
uh, a cloud neutral, vendor neutral uh, database that everyone can leverage, which enables developer freedom. And I think that's, in the end, that's all it, this is about, is developer freedom. Uh, as a developer, I should not be worried when I use a particular document database that if I move to another cloud on premises, if I can't use a particular provider, that I'm locked. I cannot do anything. I should the the choice should be completely free, and I and it should be available everywhere, and that's our in the end the, the core goal of Document DB project is developer freedom. The foundation is just announced, uh, so it's a bit early. But what kind of roadmap do you have for the project for let's say next six months? Well, recently we've been investing in richer compatibility with MongoDB drivers. Um, so that's one area that advanced. Uh, we invested in Kubernetes operator to simplify deployment. We invested in scale out and, and uh, high availability uh, of the engine. Uh, that's another area that is important. Uh, we will invest in AI capabilities supporting broader set of vector indexing algorithms, et cetera. That's important to our customers. And I'm sure every contributor will bring what's important to their customers. So that's all just will make the project richer. Uh, but one thing is that two, two key things will be uh, invariant. One is it will be on the Postgres, no forks, pure open source Postgres engine. And it will stay MongoDB compatible. So those are the principles that are in the charter of the project and in part of the mission of the project. Grill, thank you so much for sharing Microsoft's perspective and the story behind this project and the contribution. It's a very clear signal that open source continue to shape the future of cloud, AI, and database innovation. For those watching, if your company is tackling big challenges in cloud, data, AI, and open source, we would love to have you on the show, so please don't hesitate to reach out to our team. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and stay tuned for more conversations. Thanks for watching.